Hello everyone in the new year. As you can see today, I'm in a totally different setup than usual because I'm traveling, but I have decided to record a few videos for you. And today I want to show you split toning in DaVinci Resolve. This is an advanced tutorial, but if you are seeking for more systematic training, sign up to my new course, Mastering Color Grading in DaVinci Resolve, where you can learn multiple color grading techniques using a high-res footage that I am providing my course is receiving amazing reviews and it's suitable for both beginners and more advanced video creators. So if you like my teaching style, do not hesitate and click on the link below this video. And now let's move to today's tutorial. Split toning is basically changing the ratio of red, green and blue that's hitting our shadows, midtones or highlights. So to put it simply, it is adding different colors to the shadows, midtones or highlights in order to create a certain look and to add a certain atmosphere to the clip. And today I will show you how to do it using curves and we'll be adjusting three different clips. This is our first clip and this one has been shot with Blackmagic Pocket Camera in lock and I have already converted it to Rec. 709 and I have also adjusted the exposure. And if you want to properly learn DaVinci Resolve color management and how to convert different camera formats properly, don't forget to check out my course below as I am thoroughly explaining it. So now we can move straight to our split toning technique. So let's create a new serial node and I will call it curves. And now let's move to our custom curves over here. And then let's also click this expand button as this way we can make our curves bigger and it will make our work way easier as we'll be able to see properly what we are doing. So you can move your curves around and you can change the ratio if you want. But I will place my curves over here. And then here we have our color channels. First we have the luminance then the red channel, then the green channel, and then blue channel. So we can adjust them all separately. But for this technique, first, let's make sure that our channels are linked together. So let's hit this link button. And then let's have a look at our curve. So the top of the curve represents highlights, then the middle of the curve midtones, and the bottom part of the curve represents shadows. Have a quick look. When I move this point at the bottom, I am affecting mostly shadows. Then when I'm moving this point at the top, I am affecting highlights. And when I click in the middle of the curve and I move it up and down, I am affecting midtones. Now we can also separate different parts of our curve to be more precise. So when we hold Option on Mac or Alt on PC, we can create a point on the curve. I'll create it in the one third of the curve here. And the reason why I'm holding the option key is that this curve is very sensitive. So when I don't hold it, this point will move up and down. And when I hold my option key, it stays on the line and I can move it without changing the shape of the curve. So I will leave it somewhere here. And then I will create another point on my curve. Basically, I will divide my curve into three parts, more or less, to separate my highlights, midtones, and shadows. So now our curve is divided, but there's also one more thing to know. So let's grab this bottom point and let's move it up and down quite a lot. And look what happens. When we do it, the second part of the curve is also reacting and changing the shape. So when we try to affect the shadows, we are affecting the midtones as well. And if you want to avoid it, we can create another control point next to it, holding option key and look what we've got. Now the curve has got more angular shape and we can move our control point further to adjust the look without affecting our midtones. So now, for example, when I move my bottom control point, I affect only the darkest parts of the shadows over here without affecting the midtones. Okay, but this is just an introduction to today's lesson. So let me make my curve window a bit smaller and let me move it around so I can see better what I'm doing. Somewhere here will be fine. 
and I will also move my control point to what it was before. And then I'll create another control point up here to protect my highlights. Okay, and now we'll be switching between our color curves and we will be performing split toning. So let me unlink my curves over here first. And then when we switch between our color curves, we can see that the control points we have created when our curves were linked are still here. This is to make our life a bit easier. So let's start our split toning. And first, I will grab my shadows over here and I'll move my curve up just a touch. Remember, curves are very sensitive. And this way we have introduced blue to the shadows. This is before and after. Then I will move to my green curve and I will do the same. I will move my green curve up in the shadows as well. This is before and after. And this way we have introduced some teal to the shadows. And I think it's a bit too much, but don't worry, I will show you in a second how to adjust it. But now let's go to the blue curve again, as I want to take out a bit of that blue from the highlights. So let me zoom in a bit so we can see the face a bit better. And then when we grab our curve in the highlights and we move it up and down, we can see that our highlights are not being affected at all. And this is because this shot is quite dark. We don't have any boosted highlights here. So our highlights actually lay in the middle where our midtones are. So I'll create a point in the middle of my curve and I will move it down and look what's happening. I am taking out the blue from the highlights and by doing this I am adding yellow. But this is obviously way too much so let's grab the curve again and let's move it up a bit. Okay, like this will be enough. This is before and after. A huge difference. We have completely changed the look of the shot. And now I will also maybe go to my red curve and I will push it up in the midtones to introduce a little bit of red. Okay, before and after. But now, as I said, I do really like very subtle adjustments. And what we have done is a bit too much for me. And the main thing is that when we zoom in, we can see that there's too much green in the shadows and the darkest parts of the shadows should be black. And there's actually a few ways to adjust it. But with this shot, let's go here to our saturation versus saturation curve. And again, if you want to properly learn everything about curves, enroll my course below. But here we basically have our shadows on the left. So I'll create one more control point over here to isolate my shadows from the rest. And then I'll grab this point on the very left and I will push it down. Then I can also adjust my second point accordingly to create a nice roll off. And let's zoom out actually. And look what's happening. When we move our point up, we are adding the saturation in the shadows. And when we move it down, we are taking it out. Okay? So I would just adjust it to my liking. Somewhere over here. And let's scroll through the clip. I like it. And again, before and after. Now let's move to our second clip. And this clip is a Sony Lock Free clip. And I have also adjusted it already. And here I will perform the same initial steps. So I'll pull up my curves. Then I will link them together. And I will create my control points. Then I will unlink my curves again. And here I will start from shifting the red in the shadows. So I'll grab my curve over here and I will push it down a tiny bit. And look what's happening. By doing this, we have muted our reds in the shadows and we have introduced teal in the shadows as well. This is before and after. Now let's see what's going to happen if we manipulate our red curve in the midtones. So let's push it up. So this way we can clearly see the regions where we are adding red hue in the midtones. But it's not what I want, so I push it back. 
somewhere here. And now maybe let's switch to the green curve. And here I will push it up in the highlights and let's see what's happening. So this time by doing this, we are manipulating only that little portion of the sky. But again, let's go back and let's go to the blue curve. And here I will push it a tiny bit in the shadows as well to introduce some colder tones to the shadows. And this is before and after. Now let me show you some tools that can help you to refine our grade. Because sometimes we push the curve too much and then we decide that we want more subtle effect. So I'll push my blue curve a bit more in the shadows to show you how it works. Okay, so we can basically use our sliders over here. Instead of going to our saturation versus saturation or saturation versus hue curves. So this is what's happening when I'm moving my blue slider, for example. So this way I can refine my color shift like this. So I'll push it to the left just a bit. And again, before and after. Now let's move to our third clip. And this clip was shot with Ari in S-Log3. And I've also already adjusted it. And let's move straight to our curves node. And let's bring up the custom curves. And here again, I will make sure that my curves are linked and I will create the same control points as usual. And here we have a lot of blue hue in the shot. So let's start from manipulating the blue curve and we will start from the shadows as this clip is quite dark. So again, we will get the best results manipulating shadows. So by dragging this point over here down, I can affect the darkest parts of my shadows and by pushing them down, I am introducing green. And this is before and after. And now let's move to the red curve. And here I will also use the same control point, but this time I'll push it up, introducing red hue to the shadows, like this. Remember, it's all about experimenting sometimes. And look what we've got. Very interesting. And we have already transformed this shot completely. This is our before and after. Just look at the difference. So now maybe let's try to shift the midtones. So let's grab the green curve. And I want to introduce a little bit more green to the model. And again, when I move my highlights over here, nothing really happens. Highlights are not very sensitive. So let's grab our midtones in the middle. And let's push them up a bit. And look at that. Now we can see a difference. But here we need to make only a small movement. We don't want to make it look overdone and artificial. So about here is looking good. And now I also want to boost more these red areas. So I will go back to my red curve. And here when we drag this control point down, we'll create the S shape that will help us to introduce more red in the lightest parts of the shadows, introducing more red hue. I obviously want you to experiment with this in your own time, using your own footage, because this is the only way to get a feeling of how the curves work and how they react. And this is our final before and after. A huge difference. Thank you so much for watching my videos guys i hope that you like them if you do hit subscribe and once again don't forget to enroll my course by clicking on the link below this video see you soon